Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mathless Zone. Today we're going to be doing a basic overview of quadratic graphs. Okay, so some of the first things we always learn about with quadratic graphs is the minimum or maximum, the vertex, which is also a part of the minimum or maximum, axis symmetry, y-intercept, domain and range, and some x-intercepts. So we got some graphs so we can pretty much label them. And the vertex is this point right here. This is the vertex, okay? And a part of the vertex is going to be the axis of symmetry and the min or the max. It can only be a minimum or a maximum value, all right? And the y value in this case is the maximum value because that is the highest this graph gets. The two is the axis of symmetry, okay? Technically, it is x equals two because it is symmetrical around that x equals two line, all right? The y-intercept and the x-intercepts, those are pretty obvious. This would be the y-intercept right here, and this would be the x-intercept right here. However, this one is also an x-intercept because it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis at that spot, okay? So for most of these graphs, you're gonna have two x-intercepts and almost all of them will have a singular y-intercept unless you have y squared equations. The last thing we need to deal with though is the domain and the range. Well, the domain is gonna be pretty easy. The domain for each and every one of these is gonna be all real numbers. You could say that fancy looking R or you could do negative infinity to positive infinity. You could do uh, all real numbers, you could list it out as well. The range, however, is going to be dictated by that maximum value or that minimum value. In this case, it is going up to eight and it's gonna have all the numbers smaller than that, so it's gonna be y is less than or equal to eight, or you could say from negative infinity up until positive eight, and you would need the bracket around the eight, okay? So, a few more quicker examples. Um, this one, we have a vertex right here, and we have a maximum value at negative two, even though it's negative, it's still the maximum, and the axis of symmetry, A, O, S for short, would be x equals one. It does not have any x-intercepts, but it does have a y-intercept right here at negative three. The domain is still going to be all real numbers. The range is going to be y is less than or equal to the negative two. Or you could say from negative infinity up into negative two, bracket around the negative two because it does get to that dot or that point. All right, the next one. This one is our first problem with a minimum value because it's facing upward. It has a y-intercept again at negative three. It has two x-intercepts here and here. And then the only thing we're missing is, oh, we're missing the axis symmetry. That would be x equals one would be the axis of symmetry. Axis symmetry, minimum, maximum of this point. This point is the vertex as well. Domain is still all real numbers. The range is going to be going up this time from negative four, so you could say either from negative four to infinity, or you could say y is greater than or equal to negative four. All right, so that's identifying the parts of a parabola. The next thing we have to do is be able to find it from an equation and graph for that matter. Okay, so for these we're gonna be uh, graphing the following equation, labeling the y-intercept, the vertex, the domain and range, that sort of stuff. In order to do it, we need to use a formula called negative b over 2a, which I'm gonna write in a few locations, negative b over 2a, all right? So negative b over 2a, that tells you the x value of the vertex. So if it tells you the x value of the vertex, then we're gonna start with that, and then we're gonna use that to find the y value. Your a, your b, and technically your C are right here for later, but for right now, all we need is A and B, are found with the numbers in front of the X squared, the number in front of the X, and the number that is just off to itself. So it is not one X squared is not A. The letter for A, the number for A would just be one. So negative B, B is already negative four. So if B is negative four, negative negative four over two times one would be that value for negative b over two a. 
negative negative four turns into positive four over two makes two. Once you get the x value of the vertex, you need to plug that x value in to get the y value. So we're gonna do two squared minus four times two minus three. And if we do that, if you do it properly, notice how this is four minus eight. These two numbers are always going to be half of one another and opposite signs. It, you don't know which one's gonna be negative, but you do know that the first number is always gonna be half of the second number. So see how four is half of eight. And it could either be the four being negative or the eight being negative, but one of them will always be positive and the other one will always be negative. If we combine all these terms, we get four minus eight is negative four, minus three makes negative seven, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the y value of the vertex. So this is our vertex right here. And we plot that. Okay? So 2 common negative 7. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right there. And that is our vertex point. Our vertex point is very important. It's the most important point. The other point that you want to always plot is this point right here. This last number is always going to be your y-intercept. So your y-intercept, in this case, is negative 3. Technically 0, comma, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. The benefit of doing it, the uh, vertex and the y-intercept is you always get a sense of what is happening. There are other clues as to what will determine if it is a minimum or a maximum for this vertex. If it is a positive value for A, this parabola will have an upward facing motion and it will be mirror imaged on this other side, one, two, one, two, right here, and it will face up. If you got a y-intercept that forced it to face down, then this would be bad news for you. It didn't, so we're good to go. Domain is still all real numbers. The range is going to be y is greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex, which is negative seven in this case. Let's do another one. Start with negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a will end up being negative four because b is positive four over two times negative two ends up being negative four divided by negative four, which is positive one. Once you get the x value of your vertex, plug it in to get the y value. If we plug in that x value, we end up with negative two times one squared plus four times one plus five. That ends up being one squared. Make sure you do squared first times negative two. One squared is one times negative two makes negative two. Four times uh, one makes positive four. See how they're half of one another and opposite signs plus five. So if we add all these together, you get positive seven this time. I believe, yep. Yeah. Negative two plus four is positive two plus seven, positive. Yep. So positive one, positive seven ends up being right here. This parabola would need to face down because it has a negative two for that. And let's see if the y-intercept at positive five would do that. Well, if we plot our y-intercept at one, two, three, four, five, notice how this parabola would be, in fact, forced to go down. And I did add this secondary point to make it symmetrical. Okay, so we got our vertex, we have our y-intercept, we have our domain, which is still all real numbers, and our range, in this case, is going down so be y is less than or equal to seven. One more graphing problem. This one, a lot of times students freak out when there is a missing thing for a or b or something like that. Notice how this is the regular four. That four is the y-intercept. It is not the b value. If we do negative b over two a this time, your b is equal to zero. So this would be zero over two times negative one, which ends up being zero for the vertex, for x, not for y. So if we have x is equal to zero here, if we plug in zero, you get g of x or y is equal to negative zero squared plus four, which ends up being four. So our vertex this time is zero comma one, two, three, four. Well, here's the dilemma. We do know that this face is down, but most teachers will ask you that you plot at least one more point, and the other point we have been plotting has been the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is the same exact point. This vertex is the exact same point as the y-intercept. So what can you do? Well, it's really simple. 
You, you just plug in a number, another number, any number you want. I would recommend plugging in the number one or two if you really wanted to, to see what the other values are. And if we do that, we get one squared times negative plus four ends up equaling three. If we plug in two, you get two squared plus four ends up equaling zero. Okay, so you could plug in more than one point if you want to. I did just to show you what's going on. We got a point at one comma three and we got a point at two comma zero. If we mirror image it on the other side, we actually have multiple points. So this is the points that we found at one comma three and at two comma zero, but they mirror image and technically you get a lot more points by doing that. Domain is still all real numbers. The range would be y is less than or equal to four. Okay, last problem of the day is, a, is an application problem. Okay, so the application problems are a lot of times what throw people off. A rock is thrown straight up into the air. Congratulations, rock. If the trajectory of the rock in meters uh, is determined by the equation height is equal to negative five t squared plus 20 t plus one, where h is height and t is time. What is the height when the rock is initially thrown? Well, the initially thrown value would mean that the time would equal zero, and that would mean that you just plug in zero for time. And if we do that, we end up with a value of height is equal to one, technically one meter, which makes sense because at the very beginning, you get your y-intercept, and your y-intercept is your initial value a lot of times, as what uh, teachers would call it. Okay, so we got a height of one meter when it was initially thrown. What time will a rock reach its maximum height? Well, the maximum height involves the vertex. So let's just find the vertex. We got negative b over 2a. That would equal negative 20, because you have to change the sign of the b, over 2 times negative 5. And if we do that, you end up with negative 20 divided by negative 10, which ends up being 2. Well, 2 is the x value. And notice how the x values this time are t. So this is the time. And if we plug it in the time, we get the maximum height. So currently, the time that it reaches the maximum height would be 2 seconds. What would be the maximum height? Well, the, the maximum height would be what we get when we plug it in. So that's going to be negative 5 times 2 squared plus 20 times 2 plus 1. I'm going to use a calculator for that. We got negative 5 times 2 squared. Make sure you're using parentheses. If you don't use parentheses, you're going to get it wrong a lot of times, especially if you're plugging in a negative value for negative b over 2a. Use parentheses. If you do all that, you get a height of 21 meters. So this is going to have a maximum height of 21 meters. That's crazy. It's pretty high. That's like 60 feet. Next one. How high would the rock be after one second? Well, we know the time is one second, so let's just plug in one. The height would equal negative 5 times 1 squared plus 20 times 1 plus 1. If we do the math there, I'm again going to use my calculator. And I'm going to be fancy. I'm going to highlight it. If you have a fancy calculator, you can just replace the values with 1. And you get 16. OK, so after one second, the height would be at 16 meters. And last but certainly not least, my favorite question. Will the rock ever be at the same height as it was in part D? If yes, what time would that occur? So what is happening with this parabola? If we graphed it, we have it having a y-intercept at positive 1. It has a vertex at 2 comma 21 because that was the max height. So after one second, two seconds, we are at a maximum height way up here at 21 meters. And then it's going to have to come back down. Okay, so it came back down and did that because whatever goes up must come down. And at one second, we were at 16 meters. So will it ever reach a height of 16 meters again? Well, yeah. It will reach a height of 16 meters again at 3 comma 16 because it's symmetrical. So at two seconds, we were at the max height. And then after it took from one, 0 to 1 seconds, we got to 16 meters. And then another 1 seconds, we got up to 21 meters. And then it came back down 3 seconds later symmetrically at 3 comma 16. So at 3 seconds, it would be at 16 meters again. 
okay? That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, everybody, stay positive, my friends, and I will see y'all later. Bye.